Church, good morning. Are you all well? You're looking well. It's so good to be with you this morning. Thank you, everybody, for your your text messages, your prayers, your 
your encouragement while I was away in, in Portugal. It really meant um, the world to me. I know that some of you were a little bit concerned about the little video I posted on WhatsApp where I was a little bit teary with snotters and missing home and missing you. And um, I really just, just love you guys so much. So thank you. Really, really appreciate that. Hey, we have got such an incredible uh, morning um, set out for you this morning. We're going to be joined with Adam Montgomery. What? And, uh, oh, yes. Adam is going to be leading us in, in worship this morning. And um, man, if you've never heard Adam sing before, get ready to hear heaven. And, um, and, I, and I mean that with all sincerity. I have known Adam for most of my, my walk with Jesus and um, been under his leadership as he's led worship in countless um, environments. And I've never not felt heaven when Adam leads worship. And then, um, you know, we've got Pastor Brian Somerville, um, my hero, my pastor. And um, he'll kill me for saying this, but the grandfather of Oma Community Church. <laughs> I just put 10 minutes on my preach right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for those of you who've never met Brian before, Brian is the executive um, leader of Christian Churches Ireland. Christian Churches Ireland being the network of churches that we are honoured um, to be a part of that we, call, that we call family. And so, hey, would you stand with me in praise? Adam comes up. And Adam will, will lead us in worship. And so, Jesus, we just thank you this morning that we are your children. We thank you that we are saved, that we are loved, that we yeah. belong, that you've chosen us. And that even before we were born, in spite of everything that you knew we would do and wouldn't do, you still chose to create us, to love us, and you died for us. Yes. And so, Jesus, we come in praise. We come in honor and we just ask, would you just manifest yourself in this room in yeah. such a way that we could glorify your name? Yeah. And all God's people together said, Amen. 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 Come on. Thanks very much, Tim. That was a lovely wee intro there. Come on. It's great to be here. Yes, Lord, come and have your way. We want to honour you in this room right now, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord. Steve cries out. 
Praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore, for endless praise. We will sing Your praise, O oh Lord.
all the glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Why will not boast in anything? No gifts, no power, no wisdom. But I will boast in Jesus.
all to your name. All the glory. as we say God you're, you're, you're worthy of it all I wonder what is it that God needs to have the supremacy in your life this morning what have you what have you walked in with that you, that you don't want to take back out again what is the what's the circumstance what's the thought pattern What's the pain, the regret, the, resor- the sorrow, the fear, <coughs> the, the sickness? Like, what does God need to have the supremacy in, in your world right now? Yeah. Hey, if God is good. Yeah. Yes, man. I don't really know what else to say other than that. God is good. And God loves you. And in spite of your circumstances, it might just feel like that doesn't make sense. But yet he's sovereign. I mean that's I, I I kid you not. I've been walking with Jesus for a for a day or two now. And um, I, I still, if I'm being honest with you, struggle to comprehend the magnitude of the love of a God. Who would send his son, his most prized possession, from heaven to earth? And his son lived a perfect life so that he could become the perfect sacrifice so that you would be made perfect and holy. Like, wrap your head around that if you can, just for a moment. There was this man named Jesus, yet fully human yet fully God who left his throne of grace for you for you for us for me for everyone in this room and everyone outside of this room why? for God so loved the world that he would give his one and only son that anyone who would believe in him would not perish yet, yet have eternal life. Like seriously, I mean if that's not worthy of praise this morning, I don't know what is. And if that's not worthy of us getting excited about this morning, I don't know what is. To think that I have got an identity that is formed because of Jesus' life, death, resurrection and ascension to heaven. That my past has been dealt with, my present is taken and secure and my future is in eternity where I am going to sing where we are going to sing where you are going to sing holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty where we are going to go and look at God in heaven and say you're worthy of it all we don't just get to sing it here we get to sing it there and we get to sing it forever everywhere and forever hey let's sing it again will we Let's sing it like we really mean it this time. Not that you didn't, but let's, you know, let's pump some steroids into it. Let's elevate it. Let's, let's really reach out to heaven this morning and actually with the mindset that he is sovereign, that he is Lord, that he is God, and he is worthy. It's not a holy karaoke anymore. We are touching heaven with the praises of earth for heaven to come and touch her. Come on, let's sing. Come on. Worthy of it all. Yeah. Come on. You are worthy of it all. Yeah. Oh, from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. 
safety this morning. God, thank you that we had a safe passage this morning. Thank you, God, that we get to worship without the fear and worry of a missile this morning. Thank you, God, that we had food to eat this morning, clothes to wear this morning, fresh running water this morning, that we were able to transition and drive and safely this morning or, or, or walk and safely this morning but that we are surrounded by people who love us that we are surrounded by people who want nothing but the best for us we are surrounded by people who want to see us thrive in life God thank you for your church in Oma today thank you for a community God that is passionate in the pursuit of you radical in the demonstration of its love and sacrificial in the service of others. God, thank you for a community that has sold out on bringing life and love and hope to their sphere of influence Amen. in such a way that you would be glorified, not just in our town, but in our county and in our nation and around the rest Amen. of the world. Amen. God, we pray for Pastor Sidney in Amsterdam this morning as he preaches. We pray for Maria as um, she misses her husband today. God, we thank you for Pastor Ralph and for Amy 
who are here this morning from, from Boston and God bless Oma might not be the biggest town in the world. We have big influence around the world because of who you are and what you do and what you're doing. And so God, we thank you that we get to be part of something that is so much bigger than ourselves that it is your church here on earth, co-heirs, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. And so God, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. Church, would you show your appreciation to Adam this morning? Hey, I told you heaven was coming, didn't I? And um, Adam, thank you so much. We're so grateful um, for you to, to be here. Hey, if you're joining us online this morning, and if you're here for the first time this morning, hey, I, I want to tell you, I'm really delighted that you have made the time, taken the time, and found a way to be able to connect with Uma community church this morning on a beautiful sunny crisp morning if um, you would like to find out more about who we are if you would like to connect with us at a deeper level you can do that via our website by going to our connect page and filling out the form and we would love to connect with you if you're in the room this morning or somewhere around your seat you will have stumbled across one of our welcome cards please fill it out we'd love to get to know you we'd love for you to get to know us so that we could go on a journey together where you would thrive. Hey, one of the things that we love to do here at Oman Community Church is we love to give. We are generous. It's one of our values. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Pastor Brian is going to come and talk a little bit more around that in a moment as well. But hey, look, as a church, we love to tithe. We love to give. And on your seat, you will have found an envelope. And we encourage you, if you're not an online giver, if you haven't got set up to give online, um, via direct debit or PayPal, you can give to us physically in the room this morning by putting some money in the envelope and then our offering basket is to the left as you exit the room. Is that cool? Yes. Jesus, we thank you for generosity this morning. We thank you for tithing hearts this morning. Um, we thank you for obedient hearts this morning. God, I pray that you would help us as a leadership team um, be good stewards of all that you have entrusted us with, not just with the lives of our people, but with our finances as well. Amen. Hey, church, let me just bring the bring it down a little bit, just for a moment, if, if I can, um, just to kind of talk about the, you know, this thing that's happening in, in, in Ukraine. I'm belittling, I almost sound like I'm belittling, belittling it by calling it a thing, but I actually, I, I don't know how to relate with it, if I'm being honest. And... Um, if I fall apart when I'm saying this, please, please bear with me. I've been massively challenged over the last um, 48 hours. This, this week, I have um, really sought the Lord on what the response of Oma Community Church could potentially be um, into this um, situation. situation. Yeah. Thanks, Eileen. And... Um, Part of my issue, and go with me on this for a moment if, if you can, part, part of my issue has been is that we want to be part of the solution, not part of, of, of the problem. And, uh, you know, where could we best direct our energies? Where could we best direct our, our resources? Where could we best um, direct our help and encouragement and support to our brothers and sisters um, in, in, in Ukraine? And... Um, I don't know if you've, uh, anybody in the room is familiar with like TED Talks, TED videos and things like that. It's kind of a future thinkers come together, leading lights in particular fields come together. They also create um, newsletters and um, an online articles as well. I came across an article during the weekend. It's an eight minute read and I'm going to spare you the eight minutes. Um, but what I am going to do is tomorrow, along with everything that I'm about to share, I'm going to create a resource pack that I am going to personally send out to you from my own email account um, to kind of remind you of everything that I'm about to, to, to share this morning. And so I come across this, um, this article and um, it's an encouragement to think about how you give, an encouragement to think about where you give and um, an encouragement to ask yourself three questions before you give into anything that is looking to um, support into in, in chaos. 
and it highlights a number of global disasters around the world. And what they what they seek to do is they seek to encourage us to think about how we can we can best give. And one of the things that this particular article highlighted to me is that very often we can like go into like hyper giving mode, okay? Because we want to do everything that we can to love our neighbours um, around the world. And um, what this article kind of unpacks and, 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 and pulls out is that more often than not what happens is that these support centres, um, packaging offices, post offices and the places that have been destroyed are overwhelmed with the giving that, that they receive. And one of the things that is highlighted in this particular article is the influx of unsolicited and mostly unwanted donations clog shelters, airport tarmacs and warehouses and drain the time and energy of the willing but scarce volunteers. It goes on to say that more often than not when an area is in great need they don't have the structures and the resources and the facilities to be able to match the generosity of the world as it is sending it. And that's something that has really challenged me this week. It's something that on a kind of very small municipal level I'm aware of at, at, at local level. Those of you who volunteer in our community centre and in the food bank will be aware of the fact that more often than not we get a lot of stuff into the food bank that we can't use that is surplus to requirements and it actually makes creates work for us that we never signed up to to do so i have really I, I i kid you not really been massively challenged around this whole area about you know are we going to send food are we going to you know am i going to encourage you to like raid raid your your, your clothing wardrobes and, and all of those things and i've got to be honest with you and say i'm not okay and there's a reason for that is that I don't want us to be part of the problem. And I found the answer to what I believe is our response to this global crisis yesterday with Brian Somerville and Tanya Shurka. So Tanya is a personal friend of mine. I've known Tanya for about eight years. Tanya is Ukrainian. And Tanya and I studied together. We did the academy together, the training um, arm of, of CCI. We were students together and now we work together. She's part of the events team at, at, at CCI. And Tanya and Brian had a conversation during the week that was posted onto our social medias yesterday. Some of you will have seen it on WhatsApp. Some of you will have seen it in uh, Facebook and Instagram. Or if you're getting, if you're signed up to receive a newsletter from CCI, you would have got that direct into your email box as well. And Brian, an incredible interviewer, as many of you um, will, will already know, but um, throughout the course of the conversation, they were chatting about, you know, what is life like and, you know, how is Tanya kind of coping and stuff. And um, Tanya began to speak into, um, it broke my heart, she began to speak into an area that not a lot of us would be from very familiar with, which for me was like, next level pain and she began to talk about human trafficking and she began to talk about sex trafficking now i want you for a minute right if you can go with me and, and, and use your imagination imagine for a minute your house has just been blown up okay and your house has been blown up and you're and you're fear fear for your life okay and you begin to travel to think about another country where you're going to become a refugee and you're so desperate for help that you meet somebody who offers you help, okay? And you think, oh, thank you, Jesus, thank you, God. I have found refuge, I have found safety. And then within maybe a matter of hours, you find that you're actually being trafficked. That's a whole other level of pain. And that's a whole other level of, of brokenness. And that's like, you know, now, we were, myself and Jenny and Ralph and um, Amy were in, in Navin yesterday and they were walking around the graveyard, <laughs> as you do. <laughs> Some people like to look at old headstones. Uh, I like to look at my phone. Uh, so I, I, I was watching this video yesterday um, while this was all going on and I, I haven't recovered yet, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I'm so compelled 
to do something about it. And you'll, you, those of you who've journeyed with the church will know that we really value compassion here at Oma Community Church. It's one of our values. It's one of the things that we hold dear to our hearts. And we understood from, you know, when we did our, our, our value series at the beginning of the year, the word compassion in the Latin, compassio, means to suffer with. Imagine for a minute what it must feel like for somebody who's had their whole world turned upside down and they're in traffic. It doesn't even bear thinking about, does it? So on my way back yesterday, as Ralph and I were in the car and I was just trying to go, God, help me. Please help me. Help me find a way to, uh, and I didn't speak, I was silent the whole journey. He'd, and you know, I'm never quiet. And he couldn't even get two words out of me. And he's quiet. And um, I was so, so compelled to find a way that we could really go into the depths of that evilness and that depravity to invest into hope. And Brian, funnily enough, two years ago was teaching at the academy. And one of the things that he said, and one of his points was this day, yesterday, two years ago, invest into hope, not hurt. And I thought, well, how can we as a church, how can we as a faithful community impact in such a way that we're part of the solution rather than part of the, the problem? And then I remembered that we have this incredible relationship with a church in Banbridge called Grace Generation Church. Uh, Helen Couples and Paul Couples, the, the, the senior leaders there. And Helen is the national coordinator here on the island of Ireland for A21. What do A21 do? A21 go into the world to engage in human trafficking. Wow. So I contacted Helen yesterday and I said, Helen, what can we as a church do? How can we as a church support you to go into the world at Ukraine primarily so that we can suffer with, so that we can invest into hope. And so she's given us a couple of things that, that we can do that will be a financial support to the work of A21 in such a way that we can make a difference in the world. So I'm going to put this all back into an email tomorrow, but essentially you can, and we're going to do this next week, we're going to lift a love offering next week. So we're going to lift a love offering next week and all the money that we lift, we're going to send directly to Helen who's going to pass it on to A21. If that's not something that, that you would like to do, you can give directly into A21 and I can give you their account details and it will be in our email tomorrow. Or alternatively, I can put you in touch with Helen. And Helen would love to connect with you. She'd love to tell you about the work of A21 in such a way that we can make a difference. Does that sound cool? Amen. Does that sound good? Yeah. Does that sound like something that we could do? Yeah. Where we can be part of the solution rather than being part of the problem. So I'm going to encourage you. Let me tell you what I'm doing, okay? And this is just something for you to think about. You'll know if you've been journeying with us for the last couple of weeks that the language that we are using for Lent is this. We're not giving up. We're giving out. And so we've been trying to think about how can we be generous rather than thinking about, oh, I'm not going to eat chocolate for the, for the next six weeks. Well, I'm going to be generous for the next week, six instead. And so we've been sending out daily challenges. You'll have seen that. You know, we encourage you to text somebody the other day. We encourage you to invite somebody around for a dinner on, on Friday. Yesterday we said, um, pray for somebody around the world. Well, this morning, I just want to flip that language just for today and say, what could you give up? in order for you to give out. What could you give up in order for you to give out? I sat last night, this is my own personal, just so that you can think creatively. I sat last night and I went through every subscription that I have going out of my bank account and I canceled them. My boxing Dazone subscription, gone. My Athletics Weekly subscription, gone. My personal Netflix account, gone. All of the things that I'm subscribing to, gone. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm giving up to give out. 
And all of the money that I would be spending on each of those things, I'm going to send direct to Helen Couples. Hallelujah. There you go. We're going to make a difference. Yes? Yeah. So I encourage you, what could you give up? What could you give up? Unfortunately, I don't pay for coffee anymore in Bob and Burps, <laughs> or I would be giving up coffee. That's a hundred pound a month right there. A <laughs> week. <laughs> a week. Right? A day. Yeah. And I, look, I know I've gone on for a while, and the announcements are taking longer than they could, and you know what it's like when we have a guest coming in. But this is so important. This is so important. The other thing is this, and Brian, I, go, go with me, and I apologise again for, for taking so long before you can, can get up, is that... Um, what I've noticed as well is this, is that some of us don't know how to feel in this season. Some of us don't know how to like, respond in this season. We don't know, like, is it okay to be happy? Is, you know, is it okay to have joy? Is it okay to be excited about things? And we're kind of treading the water, and we don't know whether we're coming or going sometimes. Like, I, you know, I was sick last week. I've been sick for a year, basically, but it seemed to intensify last week, and I'm feeling really sorry for myself, and back to the doctor, and back on medication that I hadn't been on and, and stuff like that. And then I'm like, oh, but I'm not Ukrainian. Do you know what I mean? And then I'm kind of like, actually, by saying that, I'm belittling how I actually feel and I'm not addressing my own emotions. Because none, none of us know how to feel in this moment. I want to encourage you, whatever emotion you feel is whatever emotion you feel. If you're happy, be happy. If you're excited, be excited. If you're, if, if, if you're, if you're sad, be sad. I want to encourage you, it's actually okay to be excited about stuff that's coming up in the future. And this is a perfect segue for me to tell you about a conference that's coming up. <laughs> We're going to shift our emphasis right now because we have got the opportunity to gather as a national family. Close your eyes for a sec. Close your eyes. Imagine you're in a room with a thousand other people who love Jesus and some of them love him more than you. Not possible. Maybe not for you. Imagine that for a minute. And they're singing their praises to heaven and you're being taught under the word of God with world class communicators all in this one big space and imagine you were given a ticket for that and it was free oh. would you be excited about that yes. guess what I would be excited about that too so here's the thing CCI Christian Churches Ireland are going to facilitate that dream that we just placed in your head and your heart and on the 23rd of April, in Britannia Church in Dublin, from 9 in the morning till 7 at night, we're going to gather together as a national family. We're going to sing to God. Yes, we're going to sit under world-class Bible teaching. And we're going to have community, coffee, tea, food trucks, bouncy castles for the kids, youth ministry for our teenagers. How awesome Come is that? On. So I'm going to play a promo video. It's going to play behind us. And when the promo video stops playing, Pastor Brian is going to get up and he's going to encourage us under the word nice. around this whole idea of generosity. But I'm looking at everybody in this room right now. I expect you to be there. As my brother and sister in Christ, I want you there. I want to worship with you. I want to pray with you. I want to celebrate what God is doing across our nation with you. But I want you to be encouraged in the word. And I promise you this. You will be encouraged in the word. We're going to kind of unpack this a little bit more over the coming weeks. And look at buses and minibuses. Or car sharing and car pulling and all of those things. Look at me. Hear me. There's no reason why you can't be there. So there's no reason why you shouldn't be there. Watch the screen. Hope in 2022, after all the hard times that we've been through, how fantastic is it to be able to gather once again for a free event here in the phenomenal Britannia Church in West Dublin. We're so looking forward for your church coming, for you being here, and there's 1,400 seaters. There's a seat here for you. There's going to be room for your children in our kids' ministry. There's going to be youth ministry. There's going to be food trucks around the place to bless us with our food, and it's going to be a great time of just being together once again. We took it for granted before, but now we can savour it. So we are so looking forward to you signing up 
be part of this play event, April 23rd, Movement 22, on Tuesday at Seems to be here. here happy days good to see you all it really is good to be back happy 2022 it's march will i turn it on he said give me the thumbs up i thought he was giving me the thumbs up he said turn the mic on that's what that means oh. that's better well hello are you doing well yeah. are you ready for movement yes yeah i think yeah. we need to go to movement we'll go to movement that uh, free event glenn and uh, sophia barber coming over from the uk it's going to be epic it really will so you're going to hear a lot more about that in due course Good to hang out with Adam Montgomery. Yeah. Good to see you, man. Yeah. How are we doing? You all right? Yes. Happy days. And uh, can I just encourage you about your pastor, uh, about your leaders, and uh, Tim, you are just a thriving ball of flames, man alive. Doing phenomenal. Jenny, we're praying and for you and just, you know, all of it. Come on, what, what a great thing you're doing. Wasn't that beautifully delivered, that whole heart for that you're creating an appeal? Uh, that was a great appeal. And honestly, just get behind that, get part of that. And uh, yeah, it's really, really exciting. So here we go. You're part of this uh, generosity series. I got something I want to share with you today. Generosity is a superpower. Yes. When I talk about superpowers, you think of Superman, you think of Thor, you think of Iron Man, you think of Hawkeye, you think of all the Marvel. Anyone a Marvel fanatic in the in yeah. church? Yeah, me too. Okay. <laughs> I went to watch Belfast. Have you seen the movie Belfast yet? Yeah. It's a good show. But you know what? I was waiting for Iron Man to arrive to fix it, to be honest. It was too deep for me. It was, I, had, I had to go to the cinema and not think. Is that okay? Just noise. And so, anyway, it was, yeah, it was good stuff. But it was all right. So, I mean, generosity is a superpower. And um, in our house on Saturday mornings, everybody, it's a busy day. Anyone else's house on Saturday, just don't organize anything. There's stuff. There's hockey. There's trips everywhere. There's whatever's happening. But also on, look at that, lovely. And whatever else happens on Saturday, there's also in our house the day we clean. It's the day we do the tidy up, the vacuuming, the dusting, all of that stuff. Anyone else do Saturday or is it a Friday with you or a Thursday or not at all? Just leave them behind it. Whatever. Anyway, it's a Saturday for us, okay? And because in our house I don't do any DIY, I wreck stuff, okay? No one comes to me with DIY, okay? So I think, well, what I'll do, I'll do the vacuuming. We call it hoovering here. And in our house, we have a wee Henry. Anyone have the wee Henry fella? Wee red boy with the eyes, big nose on him. Okay, so we, we have a Henry. And when we had a Henry, and I'll explain why we had, we no longer have. Henry is gone, okay? And so our house is, at the, I mean, ground floor is kitchen, garage, and then upstairs is our living room, and above that's the bedroom. So we're in the middle floor, and Henry's outside in the landing. I'm in the living room, and I'm trying to hoover and vacuum away here, and I'm pulling Henry in, and Henry won't come in. Okay, he's stuck on the landing around the side of the door. So I'm having none of it because in the first 10 minutes of vacuuming, I am a no-fly zone, okay? I hate it, I'm in bad form. So I mean, after that, I'm okay, but in the first 10 minutes, it's like, <laughs> okay. And so Henry's not playing ball, it's the first 10 minutes, and I'm losing the will to live, okay? That's where it's at. So I go, right, Henry, do as you're told, and I pull Henry in by the, by the pipe only to pull right out the nose and the whole thing comes off. <laughs> and if I wasn't in bad enough mood, the whole thing now goes to pot. And honestly, I had an Oscar winning performance moment to myself. I had a yeah. moment, okay, I sat on the arm of the armchair in the living room, okay, and I said these words to myself. There's nothing wrong with my life. Life is not so bad, okay? But I just <laughs> yeah. wrecked Henry and I yeah. sat down to myself and I said, Why does everything have to be a fight? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about amateur dramatics 101 right there. Yeah. Why does everything have to be a fight? And so I'm having this moment and suddenly this voice goes off in my head and it says this because that's the whole point of generosity. And I'm like, well, Henry, can you speak now as well? 
what is happening? And so when, you, when you're thinking, and, and these voices, you know, as, as a pastor who communicates from time to time, you've got to pay attention to those voices that come out of the blue. Yeah. And so I began to think, well, what is vacuuming the floor, okay? And having a moment to myself got to do with generosity. And I discovered as I prayed and as I sat down to think this out, it has got everything to do with generosity. Because there are people in your world with genuine needs who are wondering today, and you might even be one of them, why is everything in my life a fight? Why is everything hard for me? Why is everything difficult? Why does it always seem to happen to me? And when someone like you walks in to be generous in that moment, it lets that person know that they are seen, that they are heard, and their life has value. And this is why generosity is a superpower in life. Imagine, imagine you as a local church, as individuals, going about your daily life wielding that sort of superpower. You and I are looking for words and miracles and all the rest of it, and those are great. And the Bible says, hey, seek after those. But you know what? You already have a superpower, and that superpower is the ability to be generous. To release something someone in your world hasn't asked for, but it comes to them and it sticks with them and it lets them know that God sees them, God hears them, and their life has value and a future. There's a, a famous uh, Scottish theologian, he's passed away now, of course, William Barclay, and he said this, The finest gifts are given not when they are demanded, but before they are asked for. And you see, your generosity has more impact when you are generous to someone who's not expecting it. Hands up anyone in the room who's ever been on the receiving end of someone else's generosity. That's, that's, keep your hands up if you weren't expecting it. Yeah. And because you weren't expecting it, right now you'll know who was generous to you. You'll know when they were generous to you and you'll know how they were generous to you because it stuck with you. Generosity has a superpower. It has changed your life. And do you know what? It reminds me of the Father heart of God himself. Look at Romans 5 verse 8 with me. It says this, that God demonstrates his own love for us. Isn't it good that we have a God who demonstrates? Yeah. A God who shows? Yes. Hello? Yes. We have a God who shows, yeah. He demonstrates His love. He doesn't just tell us to believe and just hold on and for blind faith. That God demonstrates His love, He shows His love for us. And the Bible goes on to say that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not... Oh, I'm the wrong verse, I've moved on. He own love for us, that while we were still sinners... Christ died for us. Wow. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. That on our worst day, God the Father sent His Son so we could have the best day. Yeah. The generous giver of all. So good. But it gets even better. So not only is generosity this superpower, the Bible says that when Christians give and are generous with the right heart and for the right motivations, which are to bless people, to help people, to let them feel seen and heard and loved by God. But also the Bible says that God blesses the giver so they can give again. Yeah. Right. Is that okay? Yeah. Jesus is gathering his disciples together in Luke chapter 6, 38. And he says to them a farming illustration. He goes, give and it will be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, he says, will be poured into your lap. Mm -hmm. And then he says, for the, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So Jesus is gathering the team together and he has a farming metaphor and story in his mind. You'll be familiar, some of you, with the Old Testament practice of landowners. When they would plant the seed and the crop would grow, they would harvest the crop. But what they would do is they would leave a fringe of crops around the edge, the perimeter of the field, let's say, so that those less fortunate could go in and glean yeah. this harvest leftover. This is what Jesus has in mind. It is these people who come in with their basket. What they do is they lift up a good measure and they put it into the basket. Then they press it down so they can make more room. Then they put in another good measure. Then what do they do? They shake it so they can make more room. They fill it to the top so it's flowing over because they know that when they leave the field carrying this basket, 
bits are going to fall out. So they fill it. And God says, when you give, that's what I give to you. I give you a good measure. I press it in. I put more in. I shake it in. I give another good measure. And it's pouring out. And I pour it back onto your lap. That's what God says he does with the generous. So, if generosity then is this superpower that we have, and we are learning that when those who are generous give with the right motivations, God blesses to give again, why then is generosity something I aspire to more than I am actually good at? Why is generosity so difficult to do? Anyone? Well, I know why it's difficult for me. Because I am a natural born taker. Yes? It's better to give than to receive. Nonsense, okay? (laughs) Oh, rubbish. I love a good give. I'm a getter. Oh, I'm a getter. Absolutely. Are you not a getter? Deep down, you're not a getter. You are. I'm selfish. Are you selfish? I mean, deep down and amongst all of that, there's still parts. I'm a selfish person. Are you a selfish person? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you are. Yeah. I'm going to prove it. Yes. <laughs> Have you ever been in a photograph with your friends? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> on Instagram? Mm-hmm. And you go to look at it. Mm-hmm. Who's the first person you look at? Everyone else. It's you. <laughs> you check out you. You absolutely do. There's still a part of your unredeemed or your redeemed life that's still trying to break out. And it wants to put you first. Yeah. Well, I'm a natural born teacher. You see, when I get a nudge to be generous, a battle goes on. <laughs> Your sister-in-law and Jen Finch, okay, were having breakfast one day in um, a little bakery in Eglinton, okay? And then with a friend having breakfast. They're having breakfast as well. God says to me, okay, I want you to buy their breakfast. <laughs> and I'm like, you must be joking. <laughs> what? Are you sure? <laughs> That's what it's, it's Friday. We all, all diets are off on Friday. You're good from Monday to Thursday, but Friday's the weekend, so like whatever, I'll start again on Monday. So I don't know what they were having. Anyway, I'm trying to talk to this guy, and God's in my ear going, I want you to buy some stuff for them. And I'm like, well, I don't know what they had. I know what I had. It was the jumbo breakfast because it was Friday. And then my friend ordered a jumbo breakfast, and because I invited him, well, because you make the invite, you have to pay. And well, I'm already up for one, and God's going, two more? And I'm trying to look across and what did they have? Did they have the jumbo breakfast or was it the smaller breakfast? Now this bakery also does cupcakes, massive cupcakes. And I'm thinking, well, what if they wanted dessert as well? They want cupcakes. And think, yeah, how yeah. much will I be out? And I'm thinking, all right. And then I try to mentally visualize my banking app. Well, what is on there? And I'm having this fight with myself. Shame, I don't know why I'm saying it. And I'm online saying it. And it's unreal. It's like shocking. Anyway. I, I, I get the, the, the girl over, the, the waitress over, and I says, put their bell on the mind, staple it, whatever. And I get up and I pay for it, and I bolted out of there because I didn't want any of the thanks very much, that awkward conversation he bit. And out we go, honestly. And there's just this battle all the time when we want to be generous. Does anyone else have that battle? No. <laughs> you see, sometimes we think, well, you know what, I can't afford to give. Yeah. Yeah. But that's because we think generosity is just about money. But it's not generosity, but your time yeah. and your talent yeah. and your treasure, of right. course. You can be generous in a multi, multi-faceted sort of way. We think that, you know, being generous is for rich people. Mm-hmm. When I'm richer, I'll be more generous. You won't. Mm-hmm. Wealth only makes you more of what you already are. That's right. Yeah. So if you're generous before you're wealthy, you'll be generous after you're wealthy. If you're not generous before you're wealthy, you won't be generous after you're wealthy. Yep. Hello? Am I yep. making sense? Yep. Sometimes we think, well, I'm generosity is silly. It's silly. I, I mean, honestly, it's daft. People will think I'm mad. We think sometimes, I'm afraid to give, we'll run out. Mm-hmm. If I give to them, I won't have anything for me. But we're learning the Bible says, pressed out, shaken down, poured out, da 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 da. <laughs> then sometimes we think, well, they don't need my help. I know where they live. I know the car they drive. I know the clothes they wear. <laughs> Well, they'll be offended if someone like me wants to buy their breakfast. Like, even with these two, okay? I'm thinking in my mind, will they think that I think that I think they need help? I'm trying to get a bunch of ways out of buying breakfast. 
<laughs> trying to try, but Lord, I'll upset them. I don't want to offend them, and you wouldn't want that, Lord. I'll just bet him and me. That's it. Not at all. We, we yeah. think all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I think we're in a, in a, in a season with, with post-COVID and all the world that we're in, that um, one of the great outreach or evangelism strategies that we could have is actually to continue to be a generous church. Individual people being extraordinarily generous in the world that we are in because we are understanding that generosity is a, is a superpower and it does incredible things. So let me give you a couple of things and I'll leave it with you about reigniting, if you like, this idea of being generous in your life. This is what I know about you. You're a generous people. You're a generous church. Almost a generous community by and large. I would say you are postured for generosity. But sometimes we need a strategy to help us win the battle. Yeah. When we feel the nudge. When we feel the leading of the spirit to do something exciting. And the voices start to rise. So let me give you a couple of things that you can employ. And it's going to change your world. I hope. Okay. So the first thing is this really quickly and then I'm done. We number one want to relearn the posture of generosity. We want to relearn the posture of generosity. I am learning this is that forgiven people are the forgiving people. Very good. Oh. Very good. Brent. Yes? Yeah. That the forgiven people, well we are the for, we're forgiving. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Because there's something in our backdrop, there's something in the context of our life, in our faith and our experience with God, that understands that we are forgiven. A while ago, I was preaching in Open Arms Church, one of our network churches. They have a campus in Newbridge and in Dublin. When I travel to the Newbridge one, what I'll do is I'll leave my home in Derry and I will travel to Balnehinch where my parents live. That's kind of like 20 miles sort of north of Newry, quite near South Down. And I'll stay there on the Saturday night, up early morning, and I'll drive the, the two or three hours then to Newbridge. I'll break the journey up, okay? And there was a time a while ago, I was heading down to my, uh, my parents' house. I got there around five o'clock. I got my little night bag. I had my coat on, a little sort of carrier bag thing. And uh, it was five in the evening. I got into the house and my dad was in the kitchen, okay? Along with my mom. And my dad was this here. Bouncing. With excitement. Now my dad's 75, he is a ball of flames, okay? A ball of energy, he no longer is going to retire. He announced the other day that retiring, retiring, that's it. They will find you on the site, I'll be down a manhole somewhere, whatever. My dad thinks if you retire, you expire, okay? So he's just stuck, he's done, okay? So he's a ball of energy, in fact he's with us this weekend, and he's done more stuff around our house in two days than I've done in 20 years. You've no idea, seriously, he's a builder, but anyway. And he's in the house and he's like, out there. I said, what's wrong with him to my mother? He is, I've got you a coat. Hmm. I said, what now? I've got you a coat, and I'm going to get you the coat. He's that excited. I haven't got my other coat off yet. No, nope, I've got this bag still in my hand. I've got you a coat. My mum he's been waiting all day for you to get here. He's got you this coat. He hadn't got me a new coat. He'd got a new coat, and he wanted to give me the one that he was replacing that coat with. This leathery, waxy thing it was lovely. Very nice, nice coat. I'm going to get you the coat. It's going to suit you. I'm going to get you the coat. He goes up the stairs and he's still shouting, I'm bringing the coat down. I'm getting you the coat. It's going to look good on you. And then he starts, it's dear, you know. It costs a fortune, you know. But I know it's going to look good on you. Sylvia, is he still in the kitchen? He's still here, Jim. Yes. So I'm in the kitchen going, what is this? He comes down the stairs. He's carrying this coat. It's going to look good on you. This is going to look, oh, this is going to suit you. It's dear, you know. It was very expensive and by now like, okay I get the point it's a dear coat anyway he's taken the other coat off me that you know, he hasn't dressed me in 49 years okay now he's taken my coat off he says put that on cut your sleeve and get that on you look at that oh that looks good that suits you that suits you that looks good on you that was dear you know when you and I walk into the presence of God when you walk into church and you begin to worship when you are tomorrow morning opening up the Bible to begin your devotions, here's what you are doing. And I don't know how you think about the Father when you think of God, but I hope this changes it forever. Because here's what you are doing in the spiritual realm. You are walking into God's kitchen, the kitchen of the Father, and He is bouncing with excitement yes. to say, you know what, I've got a coat for you to wear. I've got a coat for you to wear, and it suits you, and it's going to fit you, and it looks good on you. It's very expensive, you know. But I want you to know that grace looks good on you. Hope looks good on you. Forgiveness looks good on you. My son looks good on you. It cost me everything, you know.
We have to understand that we are a forgiven people. And forgiven people, we are the forgiving people. We have been at the receiving end of the very best that heaven has to offer. And what do we do in return? We're all tight and miserly and we think small. Not at all. Not a bit. Yes. We're the big thinkers. We're the big heart. We're the big hands. Yeah. We're the big people. Yeah. Because we serve a big God who has given us his big son. And it doesn't matter what size you are. You could be an 8, a 0, a 16, an extra large, a triple X. It doesn't matter what you are. Whatever Jesus has for you, it fits you. It looks good on you. It doesn't matter what life you've lived, yeah. what sin you've committed. Yeah. There's always a coat in yeah. heaven for you. One for you at the cross. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We are the forgiven people and we are the forgiving. Jesus says in Luke 6, forgive and you will be forgiven. Yes. Full stop. Uh, Where is it? Is it up there? And then it says give and it will be given to you. Do you see it? Yeah. Do you see where he places it? Forgive yeah. and you'll be forgiven. Full stop. And the next thing he says is give. Yeah. He places give beside the forgiven. Yes. So good, Brian. Because the forgiven people we are the forgiving people in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. The second thing that I want us to remember today is the, all about the produce of generosity. Generosity produces more than you can see or know. Your generosity ripples beyond the moment of just when you are generous. Your generosity, the impact was on and on and on and on. All of you know my children. They will all be 17 in June. Okay. Wow. You pray for me. I'll pray for you. Yeah. Driving lessons, I mean. Okay, it's yeah. all coming. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. There's even a WhatsApp group in our house called Car Convo. Okay. Yeah. Little car images are popping up in that, and it's all part of it, and it's awesome. Wow. 17 years ago, Judas in, in hospital, of course with a quadruple pregnancy and she has feet up, she's on bed rest. <laughs> anyway, that's a joke. And uh, because she's laying there and so on, I got extra visiting hours in the hospital. And so it was a Saturday night, I think it was, and I was allowed to stay a little bit later. We got some KFC, it might have been at that stage, we sneaked in some chips as you do. And uh, maybe you can't do it now, I don't know. Anyway, I was just finishing off and I was about to go back to the house and Judas' phone goes. And it was Judas Auntie Margaret. Judas Aunt Margaret never married, loves the Lord. She was a nurse, a sister in a ward, a, a midwife, then a midwifery lecturer in Queens. And that's where she was, I think I've got that right, she was a midwifery lecturer at Queens University all the way till the point of this conversation. Wow. And so she's on the phone. <clears throat> and hello, hello. And Auntie Mag on the phone and she says, you know, I've been thinking and I've been praying here and there's no pressure with this. Please don't feel any pressure. But here's what I want to offer you. I want to offer you me. Mm, I want to come out of, I want to take early retirement. Mm. 